Yo, what's good? Randall here. And Bianca. And we're engaged. I hope that didn't break your ears. It broke mine. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry, I didn't expect that from you. Um, we got some questions from you guys, so let's go and answer these right now. Question number one, was being chased difficult? The answer, if I must be frank, yeah. is, oh. sorry. <laughs> is sorry. yes, was yes, is yes, and will always be yes. But was it worth it though? Yes. Always worth it. Next question. How to deal with someone's sexual history? Great question. You don't. You throw them out. <laughs> Just kidding. No. Oh um, I think I think this I think this depends person to person. I think this depends relationship to relationship. Um, I think a way to deal with somebody's sexual history. I think you first need to establish: Are you both striving for virtue? Are you both striving to live out? Um, a chase lifestyle. And you actually have to be open and honest with, with what you're saying, with how you're feeling in that terms of that person's sexual history. But remember, chastity does not care about your past. It cares about your present and it prepares you for your future. Um, so those are my thoughts. Yeah, man, uh, to bounce off of that, I think one thing that's needed to deal with someone's sexual history is to forgive them. Mercy. Mercy, yeah. Forgive them. I mean, because it can really feel like they're like what they've done in the past um, was, in a sense, done to you. Mm. Uh, I know I felt that way in past relationships, and I've experienced that myself. And someone mm -hmm. had mentioned to me, uh, make sure that you forgive them for the things that they've done. One, because um, it wasn't towards you, and mm. two, because they're not the sum of their past mistakes. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Next question. Beautiful. How did you know you wanted to marry each other? Uh, we didn't, it was arranged. It was a- oh. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm free. <laughs> I'm free. Okay, um, so we wanted, we knew we wanted to marry each other um, because, well, one, um, we grew to love each other. Two, we spent a long time dating mm -hmm. and really took our time. And three, um, we were really honest with ourselves. And I think if anyone's wondering if like so-and-so is the one, I think one of the biggest things you should know is am I like, do I know myself well? Because if you're not honest with yourself, then you can lie to yourself and be in denial about a relationship that you're in that is not healthy for you. And then you can kind of like make it over like overcomplicated. Reality, like, I don't think it's really that complicated, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I mean it's it can be difficult and it's not easy, but I think there's a difference between something being complicated and something being difficult. Mm. So those are just my thoughts. I have to burp. Sorry. That was Sorry. Um, I think just to bounce off that, um, I think two things for me, for myself, when I was discerning is Randall, the man that I feel God is calling me to spend the rest of my life with. Surprise. Yes. Um, but two things I had to ask myself is, um, one, is he leading me closer to Christ? Is this relationship leading me closer to Jesus or is it leading me further away? And then the second one was, I was like, Lord, if it's not Randall, I don't know who you have else in mind because this man is a great virtuous man of yours. Um, so I think just always just starting that, like, is this relationship always challenging me to be better than, than what I was before? But also is this relationship um, like, allowing me to love myself where I'm at and vice versa, like love Randall where he's at. So, what a great question. Yeah, Thank man, you. if it ain't healthy, bounce. Bounce. That's all I'm saying. Before. Oh, I was waiting for this one. Advice for a long distance relationship. <laughs> what? It's like we've never done that before. Shocker. <laughs> so, Randall said that we have been dating for a long time. We, da we dated for about three and a half years. Oh no, it was definitely two and a half. Sorry, am I, yeah. <laughs> I've been telling people three and a half. That's awkward. I mean, that gives us more clout than we deserve. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Two and a half years. We've dated for two and a half years before we were engaged. But it's been three and a half years before we get married, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes, that's where the three and a half came. So we dated for two and a half years, long distance. It actually wasn't until after we were engaged that we were in the same city. So we have a lot of... Um, 
uh, expertise or advice you could say in terms of like long distance um the biggest thing for long distance is communication always communicate with the other you have to prioritize time together and know that it's going to require some sacrifices also don't play the comparison game. You cannot compare your relationship to your friend's relationship where they see each other every single day or even compare your long distance relationship to somebody else's long distance relationship. It's gonna look different. I know for Randall and I, like praying once a week together was very important to us. Talking to each other, at least having FaceTimes. FaceTimes, oh my gosh, lifesavers right there. Um, Always keep it rooted in Christ. Pray for one another. Sacrifice. I know we did a lot of fasting for the other. And um, we went to daily mass. So it was beautiful just to say, hey, I might not see you in person, but I'll see you in the Eucharist. Um, but yeah, biggest thing I can say is communication. And it can work. Okay, a lot of people think long distance relationships can't work. Hi, hello, it can. Um, what, do you, what do you think? Um, yeah, I would say advice for long distance relationships one, um, it's okay that it's hard, okay? Like, mm. please, mm. please don't, like, because I, I, I feel like when, like, when I ask advice for something, I'm, like, secretly hoping they're going to give me a piece of advice that's automatically going to make my situation so much easier. Mm. True. I think asking the question of some advice for long-distance relationships, we should automatically assume and just accept the fact that it's going to be difficult, mm -hmm. no matter what. I mean... Mm -hmm. Not long. What's the opposite of not long distance? Normal relationships are always are still difficult, mm -hmm. but long distance is gonna make it more difficult. That's just gonna be a reality we have to accept. Mm -hmm. So that'd be my first tip. Second tip: persevere, dude. Mm -hmm. Like Bianca said, communicate, man. Mm -hmm. Communicate. And I'm not just talking about like, like get on the phone and talk to each other or FaceTime. I'm talking about like communicate if you feel neglected mm -hmm. communicate if you feel distant mm -hmm. communicate if you feel jealous mm -hmm. communicate if you feel worried yeah. or if you feel like something is not right i mean you can communicate other really great stuff if not but on like if you feel distant from each other communicate that yeah i mean seriously if you communicate mm -hmm. if you feel like you guys aren't getting closer or mm -hmm. if something's missing anything like that like communication 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 yeah. it's cliche but it's cliche for a reason mm -hmm. okay it's cliche because it's true uh that's not true for all cliches it's cliche because mm, it's used a lot it's cliche it's cliche next so, question so that's some advice <laughs> sorry <laughs> next, question. <laughs> next question move on <laughs> there you go next question it's up to ooh. how can a woman allow the man to lead and defer to him without being a doormat <sighs> Ah, all right, listen, listen, ladies. The truth is... Speak to the woman right now. Like, the truth is that um, if you let a man lead, you're not going to be a doormat if he's a decent, good man. If he's not a decent man, then you are gonna be treated like a doormat. Like, without fail. That's with anybody. If anyone is not decent, they're gonna treat you like a doormat. So. My advice to that is how do you let a man lead without feeling like a doormat would be first to find a man who's good, mm -hmm. a man who respects you and a man who honors you. Because I think, I think we have to move from the assumption that being led automatically means that I am less mm -hmm. or being led automatically means slavery or being led automatically means um, like some kind of, uh, servitude of some kind that takes away from your dignity. That's not true. Um, being led, to be honest, I'm, I'm really confident in saying that um, any woman that is really worth her salt is gonna want to be led by a good man. I, that might've sounded really mean, but I'ma say it, it's true. I think it's true. Um, that might've been really mean. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, you can cut that. I don't know, we can cut um, that, who knows. So I would say, <laughs> Like, what was the question again? Sorry. How, how can you allow a man to lead and defer to him without being a doormat? Yeah, so I think something to acknowledge is that when we, as women, like we need to first recognize that we we were created strong. Like God gave us, I don't know what God gave, God gave us, so, God gave us the feminine genius. So we can do a lot of things on our own. We could lead, by all means. I could lead if I want to. Um, but it's a beautiful gift to allow ourselves to receive a man's leadership and to let him lead. Now, allowing a man to lead does not take away from our femininity. And like Randall said, does not take away from our worth. Actually, it complements each other. Like a man's leadership should complement your femininity. 
your feminine leadership in certain ways. Um, being led does not mean that you become submissive and you're quiet and you don't say anything and you don't speak your mind or you don't do all these things. Like a relationship should, like when we're in a relationship, we shouldn't feel less. Um, God created man and woman, um, yes, like equal in dignity and worth, but in, like also he created us to complement one another. So I think um, allowing a man to serve, I think we have to break some some ties that we might think, which means like, oh, when I'm allowing Randall to serve, that means that I can never share my opinion and I need to be quiet and all that stuff. Um, when that's not the case, like allowing Randall to lead is actually creating a space for him to live up to his masculine genius, which will then in turn allow me to live out my feminine genius even more. It's like actually kind of crazy to think like, oh, wait a minute, by allowing a man to lead, I'm actually like healing aspects of my heart and I'm actually becoming more of the woman that I meant to be. What the heck, right? Like look at Mary and, and Christ. Like Mary allowed Jesus to lead, but we all know that Mary was no doormat to any man, actually. Mary is held to the highest esteem in heaven. How do you not get caught up in the fairy tale mindset of dating and real life dating? Hello, ladies. Probably one of my favorite questions I've ever been asked because let's be real. It is really easy to get caught up in the fairy tale. Why? Because we love watching them rom-coms. We love reading those Nicholas Sparks books. We love like fantasizing about celebrity relationships and putting hashtag relationship goals on them and looking at pictures and thinking about this is how relationships should look like. Like we should be walking on the beach with a picnic and you know, I don't know what else you do. Um, watching the sunset, like sure, that's awesome. But how you not get caught up in that is one, we stop that. And like you ladies, we need to invite, ladies and gentlemen, I will say this. We need to invite emotional virtue into a relationship. You live in the present. When a man says, hey, what's up? That is not him like proposing to you or he doesn't have some cryptic message into it. He's saying like, hey, what's up? When, um, so, how, how you stay present is one, to like be emotionally chaste, be present in the moment, be living in reality of your relationship and where it's at. Um, it is good to have ideals and expectations for your relationship, but also to remember to be merciful when you don't um, live up to that ideal. Uh, no relationship is perfect. Uh, it's never meant to be perfect. Um, and, uh, It'll, things will always turn out a little differently than how we think it will be. Um, remember that you are not dating a project. Remember that you are not in a relationship to fulfill some sort of societal um, expectation for yourself or to have however many likes you want on an Instagram post. Like you're in relationship to discern if this person is meant to be like in communion with me one day, to enter into marriage with them and live with the reality that a relationship ends in one or two ways. Either we break up or we go to marriage. Um, so I think staying in the mo moment, being present, not allowing yourself to fantasize about different things, don't play the comparison game, all those things will help us stay um, in this reality. And to like live, like I, I could have dreamt up of a huge fairy tale type of relationship, um, but I actually would never trade that in for this. Like this is a beautiful relationship because this is real and it's authentic. And I love Randall because he's better than any man that I could have ever jumped up for myself. And this relationship, while it may never, well, it well, may not never, it's not perfect. And there, there haven't been fairy tale moments in a relationship, um, but this relationship has taught me like what it means to actually love a person, what it means to put somebody else's wants, needs, and desires before my own when those butterfly flailings are gone. Because like Randall said in the beginning, like relationships are difficult. It's not going to be easy. Um, and when we understand that, entering into a relationship, then I think that helps break away from the fairy tale moment. Um, so yeah, what are your thoughts? Um. I think the way to break out of the fairy tale is by dating people, because then you're gonna know if you don't date someone. Date somebody, and then date them for a while, because just by like the way people are, you're gonna quickly find out that they're not gonna live up to the unrealistic expectations that we put on them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's as simple as that, man. So just yeah. go date people and date them for a long time, and you'll find out for yourself. It'll just happen. Mm -hmm. It's as easy as that. Well, y'all, that's all we have for today. Thank you so much for sending in your questions. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you, and if we, <laughs>
<laughs> <laughs> and if we said something that you want to expand on, or if we said something that you disagree with, make sure to leave those comments or questions down in the comment section below. Thank you so much, and we'll see you. Pray for us. We get married in nine days. What was I about to ah! say? We're getting married. All right, later. Peace. Love you. <laughs> was there something you wanted to say? I was just gonna say see you soon or like see you later, but then I was like, that's that's basic. <laughs> and then I was like second guessing myself and then Bianca okay. saved me. Peace. Relationships, saving the other. Just kidding, you don't save me and I don't save you. Jesus Christ saved me already. That's how we handle relationships. <laughs> that game. Oh my gosh. That's how. You don't come